Good afternoon, sir, and welcome to Colliers TV. This is a Colliers initiative to understand further about our industry, the real estate segment, from key players. And that's why we are sitting here with Mr. Niranjan Hiranandani, uh, founder, chairman, and managing director of Hiranandani Group. So, truly a stalwart in this industry, we wanted to first understand what brought you into this sector. Uh, from a professional family, family of professionals, father a doctor, yourself a chartered accountant, where did the real estate spark set in? Well, actually I wanted to get into the business of business right from the time of college. However, uh, I was encouraged by my father and person called Mr. Nani Palkiwala to do my chartered accountancy. However, my interest in business was there and we actually started with a textile business. And there was only an investments into real estate uh, on a side. However, the persons who were with me in real estate were not uh, easy to get along, so I started learning the line. And over a period of time, uh, with difficulties in terms of shortage of cash, I closed down the textile unit and shifted completely into real estate. So real estate is actually my second business. Right. And I think you probably ended in the, it at the right time. But from 1976-78 is when you first started? Yes till now and the immense expansion and uh, the millions of square feet, how has the journey been? Well, uh, actually it's been fantastic and uh, it's, it's, it's uh, of course there's been a roller coaster. So the roller coaster is moving upwards, but nevertheless a roller coaster. So you've had problems at various points of time, difficulties, changes in the market situation, cash crunch and so on and so forth. I think uh, uh, lots of problems, but all in all, Wonderful. Yeah, you've seen various cycles and I think we are going through one right now. Uh, so how are you coping with the perceived uh, sluggishness in the market which, which we are witnessing? Well, to be honest with you, uh, on the commercial side of the business, uh, we've done the highest business in my whole career this year. So I don't see any downside at all in terms of the commercial businesses. In the case of residential business, our growth has been 7 to 10 percent, uh, not as we would normally have 15 to 20 percent, so the growth in residential is not as strong. But nevertheless, there has been a growth. So all in all, I don't see much of a problem as far as our company is concerned, but yes, overall the markets are stressed and uh, I think uh, the stress seems to continue a little bit more uh, even now. So your continued growth, would you, would you put that to the, the brand name which you've got, your zest for excellence, you, you know, your architecture, your landscaping, the brand which you've created, your, not only your quality but even your timely delivery, you think that has a big impact in today's market on the customer? I think it does. I think the customer seeks more transparency, uh, the cus customer seeks more commitment, customer sees more uh, long-term uh, understanding that the markets are really and you're going to make products which are the highest of quality that is possible. So I think all that over a period of time has created a brand which uh, we are happy to flourish with. Yes, that is the thing, but ultimately you have to remember there's a God factor which I believe in it. We work very, very hard, but if God is not with you, nothing can help you. So I think it's, uh, you know, uh, with all these factors put together and God on our side, we've done extremely well. What would you say is, has been your biggest achievement uh, so far in this? I think you've said it already. Uh, so I would not say that there is a single big achievement in that sense of the term. We stabilized good quality work consistently, perfectly. We're trying to see that we deliver things on time. We went ahead to see that if there is anything wrong with any of the apartments that we have created, we rectify them. Uh, we were the first to see that we gave guarantees for waterproofing and plumbing over a period of time. Also the fact that uh, aesthetically uh, we made the best architecture and which stood out completely. So I think it was not one thing I think uh, which really uh, causes us to win the story. But it's a lot in all of that and to do it consistently. You know, it's all right to say I made one good building or 10 good buildings or five good buildings. It's another thing to say you made 500 buildings and all of them are good. And you consistently try to deliver honestly to the customer. 
Yes, we made mistakes. Yes, we've gone wrong. Yes, we have had problems. But it can never be said that we didn't try and that we were not honest and that there was no genuine effort on the part of us or the company. So I think all that has really helped us to convince the customer to uh, you know, come back to us. Which is a big challenge today because customers today are much more well informed. Uh, it's a very dynamic market we are into and uh, satisfying the needs of customers is a challenge. But you've managed to consistently give them what they want. So is there a lot of time which goes into R&D to, to make sure that you're building the right products for the customers? Of course. I mean, uh, there is no doubt about it that uh, we do a lot of R&D. We do a lot of study. We are constantly looking at new materials. We are looking at new design. Uh, we are trying to see that uh, there is a long-term uh, material interest. You know, it's not that you just create this material for show. It, it must also last. There must be a lasting endurability to the product that you created. So when people come to us and then they tell us, you know, uh, none of our buildings leaked in the monsoon. That's a big story. Uh, the plumbing doesn't leak. That's another big story. But overall, we try to give lots of other additional benefits which other people have not even dreamt of. So in our townships, we'd have a school, we'll have a hospital, we'll have gardens, we'll have children plays areas, we'll have clubs, swimming pools, uh, malls and stuff. So we give a holistic quality of life second to none. But all in all, it's customer driven. Um, you know, we'd also like to understand a little more of Hiranani Communities, which is your new entity and seems to be going through an explosive growth right now. So would you just tell us what are the plans for that? Well, in 2005, my brother Surendra and I, the co-founders of our Hiranandani group, uh, we decided that the few new projects outside Mumbai we should do separately, just as a succession planning. Second part of it, we took a further step in uh, 2015 that we said all new projects that we do, we will do separately as families. But we still work together in many of the old uh, projects, including Pawai, including Thane and all the others. So all in all, uh, we met that together. But we started separately too. So one of the divisions which we have started separately, which I have started, is Hiranandani Communities. Uh, yes, we've had a lot of projects that we have started and we're planning to grow uh, both in the residential, commercial, retail and township areas. In fact, we are also looking at an industrial township this year. So the growth has been tremendous and uh, in this year itself, we can say that the expansion has been explosive. So this industrial township, is that going to be in Bombay itself? No, in fact, it's in your town, Pune. Oh, I see. Okay. Right, right. I, I heard about that. And um, you're also uh, playing a major role in Gift City. Yes, that has been actually uh, a, a kind of a flag bearer for this year. Uh, by the end of the year, we plan to complete the first international financial center for Mr. Narendra Modi, and uh, which will be inaugurated during the vibrant Gujarat on 10th or 11th of January. And uh, we did it in 13 months time just to meet his deadlines which were very tough and uh, it's going to really make a paradigm in terms of the uh, f financial center shift to, to Ahmedabad in terms of international exchange. So they want, Mr. Modi wanted a competitive position for New York, London, Dubai, Singapore and now Ahmedabad. So this center is coming up in the second week of January and uh, we are really looking forward to it. It's a challenging buildings and there are lots of exciting things going to come up, including the fact that Bombay Stock Exchange is setting up an international stock exchange at Gift City in our building signature. Oh, interesting. Yes. So, so is Ahmedabad slowly going to replace Bombay? No, I don't think so. And I don't think the intent is that. But I think uh, they do want to set up a flagship in terms of uh, putting up the International Stock Exchange, also to set up the International Financial Center. But Mr. Devendra Fadnavis is of course trying to see that the next one does come into Mumbai also, but it may be a few years away. Sure. So where does your energy levels come from? 
uh, in addition to being an active member, and I've, every time I come to your office, you're involved in various meetings, whether it's design or sales or construction, but you still find time for CSR, you still find time, you're on various bodies, you've helped draft the SRA policy, the ULC. How, how do you manage all that? Well, I think if you love something, you can get it, you know, and I think uh, I love my work and I love uh, doing what I've been doing uh, for 35 years. And I love all the other activities too. Now, incidentally, I also run 17 colleges. I run eight schools, two hospitals, and I'm a trustee of three temples. But what I want to say is that uh, I think if you love what you do, there is uh, no limit to energy. And the moment you, uh, you know, get into something which you don't like. So I love my work, I love construction, I love the uh, creation of projects. And I think uh, that itself brings you enough energy to uh, really do it. Sure. Um, before we wind this up, uh, I would like to understand from you, all of us various stakeholders in our industry, what can we do to make it better? We are still far behind most of the mature markets, at least on the real estate front. So what are the initiatives all of us take, whether it's the government, developers, consultants, uh, stakeholders, various stakeholders, what can we do to ensure that we, we really get there? I think there are two major factors. We talk about the needs of human beings, uh, roti, kapda, makan, but the fact is that makan is not available. In fact, uh, in the richest city of India, Mumbai, more than 55% of the people live in Jopatpatis and slums. I think this is a failure both of government and private sector because neither the government nor the private sector has been able to really overcome the situation, whether it's government driven or private driven, but I think we need efforts now to solve the problem at both ends of the government and private sector. We need to make this a housing revolution. We need to do in the next five years, as Mr. Narendra Modi has suggested, to see that there is affordable housing for all. So I think the first thing we need to do is to see that that objective and that vision, that clarion call by the Prime Minister is met. A lot is being tried by the government, not enough yet, but a private sector also needs to give shoulder to it, but we must achieve it. There's a second part which I think is necessary to do. The second part is to see that low cost housing is done. I know I make a lot of uh, high end housing, but what we need to do now is what I think we will have to go for. You have to take the example of uh, telecom and aviation. When uh, telecom rates were 33 rupees a minute in Mumbai, uh, the, the telecom companies were worth two or three billion dollars. Today, the telecom rates are less than one rupee a minute but the telecom companies are worth 33 and 34 billion dollars. So bringing the price down doesn't mean that the values of the companies are not being created. Take the case of aviation. You have low cost airline and you have the regular airline. The low cost airline is making money. So Indigo and these companies are making money. The high cost airlines are not making money. They're not making profits. So I think we should also learn the lesson from this segment that if we can get into affordable housing, but it needs a lot of concessions to be given by government, which government is not ready to do just now. If we can partner with government in the case of low cost and affordable housing, it will be not only good, but profitable, and it will meet the needs of the people and people will bless you. So that is something which I hope in the next five to seven years with the clarion call from the prime minister, a housing revolution is created jointly by the government and private sector. And if we can achieve that, that will be the finest hour for me. Fantastic. So affordable housing, housing for all with support from the government is what's going to really help us uh, mature this. I think, I think also people will look at us as builders uh, of India in a very positive light, which is not happening today. So I think both the factors will take place and it will be wonderful if I can get affordable housing done in the next couple of years. But huge help from government is also needed. Of course, the private sector should shoulder it, but I think both of us have to do it hand in hand. 
thank you so much mr nani all the best thank you thank you